All right, so some guy is supposed to be coming to look at this. Uh, I told him 1300 hours my lowest offer, you know, my bottom dollar. So we'll see if he takes it. Uh, this may be the last time you see this bike. Uh, this will be the first flip bike I've flipped that's not running. That's just gonna be a parts bike. So we'll see what happens here. Stay tuned. All right, she is gone. I uh, sold her as is, but no head, uh, no cams, no valves. So uh, basically that's all I really need uh, besides some minor other stuff. It's gonna need a water pump, it's gonna need a chain. I would definitely, you know, if they're, if they're smart, they'll put a timing chain on it. I don't know if they'll do that, but um, yeah, they drove a couple hours to get here. I think they came from, she said she came from Casa Grande, Arizona. So I think that's like an hour and a half, maybe two hour drive. All right, so here's the damage on this thing. Um, let's see if I can find a good spot to mount this light. So uh, these are the caps um, off one side. What is that? The, uh, let's see. the intake side there. I don't know why I flipped it over. It could just look there, but um, you can see they're clearly gone. Uh, this is probably the best one out of all of them, but you know it's still got it's still got some roughness to it. You know I can catch my finger right there on that a little lip there uh, this one is totally this one was totally melted totally melted back here and uh, I mean it's, it's it's fairly smooth but it's definitely toast uh, this one was the worst of them all um, these big chunks weren't there. This is from me chipping away at this part, trying to get to, you know, the, the caps here so I can get the shims out and just throw them in my collection. Um, turn it around here. But I mean, you can see, you can see the damage to that. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't scraping up here, just, just right around here. So, um, it's pretty foobard. And then this one here, I mean, that's, that's actually raised up right there. And this one's pretty much uh, gone. So, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna take the Dremel and get these off tomorrow. And then I'm gonna pull these valve springs out and the valves and the keepers. And I'm gonna keep all that. And then I'm gonna uh, probably pull these studs out. And then this thing's going in the garbage because it's, it's worthless, so. But that's the extent of the damage on this thing. And then I did notice, um, uh, which side was it? That uh, was the uh, exhaust side. I don't know, that was the intake side actually. Grab this light. Take a look in there, you can see the, uh, you see how that rust down there on that valve? Let me get a better light. Yeah, see how that rust down there? There was definitely some water or coolant or something down in there. Some moisture got in there. And uh, it's, it's pretty crusty in there. So, um, yeah, that probably would have been a problem. Maybe that valve was stuck, seized shut. I don't know. Uh, this one looks like it's got a bunch of carbon buildup on it. Um, so I don't know what was going on down there with that valve, but that was definitely not good. So, but yeah, I'm gonna take the Dremel tomorrow and I'll you know, get all this cleaned up. And uh, I shouldn't say cleaned up, but I'm gonna get this cap off and this cap off and steal these shims and then try to get these springs out of here. Salvage what I can. 
So that's where we are with that. Pretty bad, huh? Yeah, that's that just amazes me how bad that one is there. And then that one there, that one's pretty. Let's see if I can get a side profile of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you can see that it's pretty, pretty bad. All right, so I'm gonna conclude this video um, about the uh, yellow Z400 that I picked up last night. Uh, it was a 2005. Um, I knew going into it that it needed a new head. Uh, said it needed a new head and cam and uh, didn't run. So I went and looked at it. Um, it definitely did not run. Um, I took the cover off the uh, crank and tried to turn it over. It did turn over just about halfway and then it bound up. Um, I was under the impression that the cams were in there because he told me the guy just put everything back and he just didn't torque it down, uh, which was a lie. Uh, the cover was on there, but you know the, the bolts to the cover were not tight. They were just hand tightened. But when I didn't take the cover off when I got home, uh, there were no cams in it. There were no cam caps. There was nothing but, you know, the box and the valve, springs with valves. And uh, very, I guess you could say, melted um, cam journals. So I'm not quite sure what happened with it. Um, if it was just a lack of oil cleanliness, Oil was pretty dark, it looked pretty dirty, like it hadn't been changed in a while. Uh, the funny thing is the guy said he was a diesel mechanic, he worked on Cummins engines and stuff like that, so I don't know if he was just used to dirty oil. Um, you know how diesels are, you know, their oil is, is always black, and this oil was pretty black. Uh, if I were to guess, I would say he was bringing home the oil from work and putting it in his bike somewhat good. I'm no, just kidding. But anyway, it was dark. It was dark brown. You know, it, it definitely hadn't been changed recently. So I think it was a combination of that and then the fact that he had a manual timing chain tensioner on there. And he explained, you know, I asked him if he put that on there and he said no, the last people did. But he proceeded to tell me that he was hearing a tick, uh, you know, any good, you know, LTZ owner knows that it's time for a timing chain. So he decided just to crank it down until uh, it stopped ticking. And uh, my guess is he cranked it down so much that, you know, he put, he put so much chain tension on those cams that they probably were pulling down real hard the whole time and just burnt that. You know, it got hot in there and it just burnt it up. Uh, I'll show you a picture here in a little bit of uh, what it looks like. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as what it looks like now. I was chipping away at it, trying to get the uh, the uh, the pucks out of there so I could get to the shims because I want to grab those shims out of there just to add to my kit so I have some extra shims. Uh, I was using a screwdriver to kind of break off the metal or the aluminum. That's how melted they were. I mean, they were melted so bad that it, you know, came over the uh, the pucks. So I'll show you here in a little bit. But I'm not sure what happened up there. Um, I can only imagine it was the oil and the timing chain tensioner screwed it all up for him. Um, he said he brought it to a mechanic, and the mechanic tore it apart and told him to need new cams and a new head. So I don't know if there's any truth to that. I'm guessing he did it himself. If I was to strongly believe, you know, anything he said, I would I would put money that he did it himself. Because he didn't seem very 
he's honest, you could say. Uh, there were some other things wrong with the bike. It needed a water pump. You know, I showed him it was leaking. You know, I wiped my finger under the bottom of the pump there, and right away it's, it was green. So, you know, I showed him it needed a new water pump. You know, it's going to need a new timing chain. Uh, it's going to need the new head. Uh, new head was like a remanufactured one. It was twelve fifty, or I'm sure I could find one on eBay for probably half the price, but you never know what you're getting with those. So uh, if I were to go ahead and fix it, I would have bought the 1250 one and uh, put that on there just for peace of mind. And it needed a chain, um, needed front tires, needed some lug nuts, and definitely needed an air filter. So all these things were just adding up in my mind. Um, you know, when I go to look at bikes, sometimes I get, you know, like so excited that I just keep thinking about the price that I kind of overlook stuff. And, um, you know, I don't really add stuff up in my mind when I'm there because I'm kind of preoccupied. Um, but I didn't know about the head and that was the dollar, the high dollar ticket right there. So, um, I did get them down from 1200 to 750 was the, was the deal. And unfortunately, I didn't bring a 10 spot with me, so I ended up giving them 760. And uh, uh, I don't ever ask for change, because that's not his fault. I didn't bring exact money, and I'm sure nine out of 10 times, we're just gonna be all, oh, I don't got any change, sorry, man. So anyway, I walked out of there, paid him $760. I uh, got it home, tore it apart instantly. Uh, I took the side covers off and the gas tank out. I left the front and back plastics on and I tore the head off. Uh, the head's pretty bad. And um, I want to check further down just to see if this guy was being truthful. Um, like I said, it did turn over halfway until the chain got bound up in there, the timing chain, because it was just it was hanging on that middle, you know, on the, middle, the middle bolt on the head, you know, the one that prevents it from falling all the way down, so. I tore it down instantly. Uh, the bottom end looked good. I didn't see any metal down there. Um, you know, the, the rod was good. There was no play in it. And um, from what I could see, you know, I didn't pull the side cover off yet. Uh, I was still con I just wanted to see, you know, if there was, you know, the rings are good and the cylinder bore was good and all that stuff. So I tore it all down, put it in a box, and uh, left it at that for the at it at left it at that point for the night, and you know, I went to bed just kind of thinking over, you know, looking at stuff online, seeing what I can get new new head for with the cams, the caps, and the valves, and the springs, and all that. Um, I was just, you know, every time I look, it would just, you know, irk me that, you know, I would have to be spending 1250 right off the bat, because I, I just don't trust that eBay stuff, you know, as far as parts like that go. Um, you know, a used part, so. No one's gonna offer you a guarantee on it because, you know, it's a used part, so. Um, you know, with that, and then like I kept, you know, adding up all the other stuff, like a chain, uh, front tires, you know, some extra lug nuts, and, you know, some new grips, and, and the seat cover. I mean, the seat cover I have, I bought that one for the last bike, and it was paid for, for it from the last bike, but. Um, I chose to just, you know, try to part it out as a whole bike. So, uh, the next morning, I was working on this thing, and um, I posted a couple pictures of it, you know, sitting on the trailer, you know, for 1500 bucks. Um, plastics were, you know, taken apart. And I just, the front one's on, the back one's on, the middle one's gone, gas tank's out, the seat's off and uh, just posted it up, you know, not running, missing, missing head, um, you know, no cams, no, no caps, no, 
valves, no springs, no head, you know, so they understood what it didn't have. So I posted up 1500 bucks, and while I'm sitting here working on this thing all day, this little Arctic cat here, my phone was blowing up. I mean, I was getting every, it would probably be like every three minutes someone was messaging me, still available, still available, still available, what's your lowest offer? I'll give you a thousand for it, I'll give you a thousand for it all right now, I'll come get it, you know. So I was like, all right, at that point, um, you know, I got done diagnosing this thing, it needs a CDI, so I told my buddy to order one up off Amazon, it was like 10 bucks, so I was gonna order one up, hopefully. And, um, I pulled the trailer out a little bit so I can get the bike off and uh, put everything back together, you know, the, the plastics, the gas tank. Um, I left the parts from the engine in, in a box. Uh, I didn't do anything with that except, you know, put a rag down under the piston so nothing can get down in there. And um, took some more pictures and reposted it on Marketplace and offer up. Uh, for 1500 bucks, you know, just like it was before. And uh, it definitely made it look better when it was a hole, you know, I, I'll show you some pictures in the video here. But um, I took some great pictures, you know, I wiped it down, made it look all nice. I didn't wash it or anything because I had an open engine. So, you know, just a quick wipe down. It looked like it had some like SC1 on it already. So, you know, the dust is wiped right off. And it was pretty clean plastics. Uh, they were shiny, they were nice. Still had the uh, little decals on the fenders there and the quad sport one. And, um, but yeah, I just sat back and waited and, you know, responded to all the people inquiring about it. You know, some guys were under the impression that I was partying it out. Um, I told him not at this point, and I was just trying to sell it as a whole. So, you know, I told him that if things change, I'll get back to him. So I just kept their, you know, message, you know, in an archive, and that way if I needed to get a hold of them, I could. Um, nobody really wanted any high dollar stuff. It just seemed like the wheels, and I don't know what else they were going after, you know. I mean, if I was gonna part it out, I would have started with the high dollar items like the plastic, plastics, the wheels, the shocks, because it had the reservoir shocks on it, which are more um, more of a wanted item than you know the pogo stick ones that are like on mine. So I would have started with that, you know, plastics, the shocks, the lower engine. Um, then I would have gotten to the wheels, and then you know any parts that were left over. You know, I, I would want to recoup that 760 in the parts that I already, you know, the big, the big ticket parts first. Um, you know, I mean, selling, you know, a fan and a radiator for a hundred bucks, you know, that's just kind of silly, you know. I mean, I would have started with the high dollar items first. And, you know, there was, there was one guy interested in the plastics. He messaged me how much. <clears throat> Um, I told them 500 bucks and you know, I, I don't understand these people when they message you and they don't check their message, you know, because you can see the little icon that comes up like on Offer Up and Marketplace and around Messenger. So, I don't know, I, I told him 500 bucks, he never even looked at the message, so. Um, but yeah, I did get a lot of inquiries about it. Um, some guy right off the bat in the morning told me to give me 800 bucks and I was like, you know what, message me at four. If it's still here, you know, there's a good chance I'll sell it to you because I didn't know how much people were willing to pay for this. So a thousand bucks was what they were willing to pay, you know, as is. Um, a non-running bike, parts in the box, and no head. So, um, I really didn't want to go below 1300 just so I can make a profit of it, off of it. Um, but, you know, the lady that did come by to grab it came, drove a few hours to get here with her kid, or two sons, I should say. And um, it came from Casa Grande, Arizona. Uh, I'm in New River, Arizona, so that was quite a drive for them. Um, the mom was really nice, so you know I, I, I cut her a deal, not 50 bucks off, because 
I'm sure that would have been gas money all the way home. So, you know, they brought a truck with a trailer and uh, came and got it. So, uh, I did make, um, I mean, in all honesty, it was $490, $490 in profit. You know, if I had brought that 10 spot with me, that would have been at $500 profit. And it was kind of weird making $500 profit for being very destructive, I guess you could say, rather than reconstructive. So uh, that's the first experience I've had of flipping a bike that basically just tore down and put in a box, as opposed to fixing up and you know adding value to the bike. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna start looking for uh, another bike here, flip. Um, if I can find one, um, I'm not gonna be buying. You know, I probably won't do this again. You know, find a bike that needs a high dollar ticket right off the bat. So um, I'm kind of glad I went, but I'm kind of sad because it would have been a nice bike when I was all done. But I really didn't want to put the money into it. So I just opted to do what I did, and I was flip it as is. And you know, that was the quickest flip I've ever done. I would say. I mean. I didn't even have the bike, you know, 48 hours. I bought it late last night about, oh, I'd say it was probably about 5 p.m. last night. And then I sold it uh, right about 6 p.m., 7 p.m. tonight, the next day. So that was a quick flip. It was just a turn and burn. Uh, hopefully I can find another bike to flip here soon. Uh, you know, the wife, I told her what I was doing. She was kind of like, what? And I was like, well, I mean, if I can make some money right off the bat, wouldn't that be good? And she's like, well, I'm not complaining. I'm just kind of shocked. So, but I mean, you bring home, you know, 500 bucks. 500 bucks is 500 bucks. 